Hi! In today's lecture, we are going to look at Fermi diagrams. Fermi diagrams are potential pH diagrams which will help us understand better the existence of different substances at different pH values in EQ solutions. Let's begin! Fermi diagrams can be regarded as maps wherein you can see the stability of given species in EQ solution. So, it was introduced by Marcel Perbe, and this is what a typical Perbe diagram looks like. So you have here a plot of your potential. This is against a standard hydrogen electrode against your pH values. So this is different from your Latimer diagram and your Frost diagram, wherein you already have a set pH values. So in these diagrams, you can see that you actually have a changing pH across the graph. And as you can see, you have a couple of lines here in this diagram. This is the simplified per bay diagram for the iron species in AQ solution. You have here some red lines, which we will discuss later, and then you also have blue lines. And then you have your different species of a given element in between. And if you're looking at this different species of iron in this example, you can see that as you go from the bottom to the top, there is an increase in the oxidizing power, which is increasing with increasing potential. So in your per bay diagrams, you will often see oxidized forms of the element at the higher portion, which is the noble end, this part, and you will see the reduced forms of your element below the per bay diagrams known as the active end. So the per bay diagrams are actually dependent on temperature, pressure, and the concentration of the reagents. So if you have a certain per bay diagram like this, for example, if there is a change in the temperature or a change in the pressure, then you expect that you will have changes on how you construct the per bay diagram. This is of huge importance in geochemistry as well as for the study of the corrosion of materials. So what are the features of your per bay diagrams? I have mentioned that this is the active end wherein the reduced forms of the element are found and this is the noble end where the oxidized forms of the element are commonly found. And you have here two lines, one in blue and the other one in green. So these are diagonal lines and these lines correspond to the electrochemical window of water stability. You have to recall that for per bay diagrams, the elements are present in AQ solution. So we have to consider the electrochemical reactions for water. There are two possible cathodic reactions as indicated by these two lines here. You have the first reaction being the reduction of oxygen molecule to water. So this corresponds to the blue line. So this is a diagonal line and this is constructed from the Nernst equation of this reduction reaction of oxygen. So you have 1.223 as the standard reduction potential for this reaction, and then you have the changes in the pH giving you a different value of the E under non-standard conditions. And how do we interpret this line here? If you have a reaction condition wherein the potential is above 1.223, then we can say that oxygen is more stable relative to water, meaning under these conditions, water will be oxidized to oxygen. And then for the green one, you have the reaction of 2H plus plus 2 electrons forming hydrogen. And the equation of the line is equal to negative 0.0591 times pH. So for this line, if you have a system wherein the potential is less than zero, then that means that hydrogen is more stable relative to water. So in this case, the reduction of water to elemental hydrogen is favorable. So what about in between? So in between the two lines, you can say that water is stable relative to hydrogen and relative to oxygen. So you can find water in this region of the per day diagram. H2 below the window, water in between the lines, and then oxygen 
above the upper line. So let's go back to the simplified Perbe diagram of iron. We are now going to look at the different lines for the different iron species in the Perbe diagram. If you can recall, the lines here for oxygen, water, and hydrogen, water correspond to electrochemical reactions of oxygen to water reduction and water to hydrogen reduction. So that means these lines here for your iron species also correspond to some reactions. And let's now look at those reactions. If you are seeing a horizontal line in your Perbe diagram, that means you have a redox equation. So in this case, you have this horizontal line here. And above the horizontal line, you have Fe3+. Plus, and below this horizontal line, you have Fe2+. Plus. So you can say that this line corresponds to the reaction of iron 3 plus reduction to iron 2 plus. And that has a standard reduction potential of plus 0.77 volt. That means your horizontal line should be in the plus 0.77 value, which is this one. If you have a vertical line, that means you have pH equilibria reaction. So in this particular line here, you see that on the right side, you have Fe3+, plus, and on the left side, the compound that you can find is FeOH3, solid. So you have the reaction of Fe3+, plus with OH, since there is an increase in the pH, forming ferric hydroxide. You can see there is no electrochemical reaction going on here, no changes in the oxidation state. As in this case, you have a redox reaction. It is not affected by changes in pH. That is why you have a horizontal line. But what if a certain reaction is affected by both pH and the potential? So that would be your sloped line. So for this example, you have the Fe2 plus on the left, and on the right, you have your ferric hydroxide. So you have the reaction FeOH3 plus 3H plus plus electron, giving you Fe2 plus plus 2 moles of water. So it can be seen from this reaction that it is a redox reaction since you have the transformation of Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus and the reaction requires protons which makes it a pH dependent reaction. And the slope of this line can actually be calculated again using the Nernst equation. So you have E equals E0 which is the standard reduction potential minus 0.059 M over N times the pH where M is the number of moles of H plus in the balanced redox reaction, and N is the number of electrons involved in the balanced redox reaction. So if we're going to look at this ferric hydroxide to Fe2 plus conversion, then the value of M here should be 3, and the value of N should be 1. In this course, you will not be asked to construct a per day diagram, but it's important for you to know how to get the slope of these lines.